Welcome to another episode of Dude I Love or Hate My New Ride. But this show is very special because behind me is actually an older truck. Yes, it may not look old, but this is a 2006 Nissan Frontier with almost 175,000 miles. And I need George, the owner, to tell me all about this truck and its longevity and how good has it been over the long haul. Let's check it out. George, thanks for coming out here. You bet, my pleasure. So you came out from Kansas City, is that right? I did. Well, tell me about this truck. Uh, you bought it originally new, right? I did, September of 06. Very cool, so it's what, almost gonna be 14 years very soon. And why Frontier? Why did you choose this one? Well, a midsize works for me. Midsize is the correct size. It fits in my garage easily. It's easy to reach into the bed. It does all the chores that I need it to do. And very importantly, it has a manual transmission. I um, do not like automatics. Okay, so it was a pretty simple truck, right? It is. So 06 was the second year of this generation. Correct. Well, let's pop the hood and kind of show what's going on under there. Okay. And this is a four liter V6. It is. Old trucks are getting bigger these days, but this Frontier still is a nice, compact, mid-sized truck. Just look at me, just, I can reach everything in the engine bay. And this four liter has a rating of 261 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque. And there are some sources online that say 2006 models had a little bit more power, 265 horses. But George and I remember that the ratings didn't change much through the years so i'm gonna call it 261. so a lot of folks out there say you know we're waiting for the next frontier when is it coming why is it not here and why is the truck mostly remain the same so i wanted to talk to you about this truck and see first of all how reliable has it been and how have you used it because you've put um, some towing miles on this i have i tow my camper trailer my 20 foot 19 foot travel trailer and my horse trailer with it and uh, put about 60,000 miles of towing miles and it works, it, it tows well. So you've towed kind of what, all over the country or where all, have you gone? I've pulled my travel trailer all over the country, I've pulled my horse trailer all over the Midwest with one or two horses in it and all the gear for shows and it does the job. How heavy is the trailer for example? My travel trailer is about 4,400 pounds loaded, ready to go. Okay. And the horse trailer is about 4,600 to 5,600, depending on which horse and whether I got one horse or two horses in it. And it'll pull it. It'll pull steep grades. Typically, I run in fourth gear uh, okay. out of six when I'm towing, and it'll run up a 6% grade on cruise and maintain speed. How's the stability when, when towing? It's good, I use a weight distribution hitch. I use nice. Blue Ox um, weight distributing hitch. And okay. Yeah, it, it's stable, works well in windy days and curvy roads, no problem. It's really cool to see that George was actually towing a lot with his Frontier. And we've done several towing tests, especially on the Ike Gauntlet, World Stuff is Towing Test. I remember that day, there were three people in the truck and we were towing almost 6,000 pounds. Wow, that was a big day and the Frontier has always surprised with its low-end torque and towing stability. It's a good towing truck for a midsize. We started officially at the beginning and we will get our very first time in the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. So it's it's not liking this one bit. No, That's our third semi. Let me get when we come to avoid Nathan. Coming down. At 250 yards. Come on, come on. Oh, baby. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Still over 40. Still over 40. And now we're leveling up. Right, and now. Okay, got it. Here we are, gentlemen. 837-62. What's her name? Her name is Flirt. Oh, you have a flirt in the back seat? She's a, yeah, she's a little flirt. Oh, hi. Hi there. Thank you for coming all of, all this way to see us. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's cute. So tell me about this four liter. First of all, how reliable has this engine been? People always say, oh, it's reliable, but 
you have the real information here. At 80,000 miles, the timing chain and timing chain tensioners went on it, and that's not uncommon. Unfortunately for me, it was right after it was out of warranty. <laughs> so it was on my dime. It cost me 1,700 bucks to tear it apart, do all that. Okay. Do a water pump. How did you uh, realize that the tensioner was going? Was there some noise you or something? You hear it. It's, it sounds like a supercharger whining <laughs> okay. and idle. Okay. And that's because that plastic tensioner has worn down and it's now metal rubbing against the metal chain and you I, hear I it see. whining. But now you have almost 175,000? Right. Any issues? No issues. Oh, okay. Since then, so. So you've done regular maintenance, no, nothing major, right? That's the only major part in the engine that's had a problem. Okay, cool. And the transmission is just transmission's original. Factory, yeah. Clutch is original. Let's kind of look at the back and tell me, like, what's going on back there? This is a short bed, about five foot bed, but look how easy it is to reach in. Boom, I can almost touch the middle of the bed just standing on the ground. And of course, the floor is very usable. You can reach your toolbox, reach your cargo and be very happy with this. And I learned something today. Although the longer six foot bed is available with a crew cab, those trucks are only automatics. And like George was saying, he wanted the manual specifically. So if you do want a manual transmission, you would have to stay with a short bed crew cab. Yeah, I've done a few things to modify the suspension. Um, it's a little bit soft when you throw a lot of weight in the back or a lot of tongue weight on it. So I put a set of Sumo Springs under it, which are a closed cell foam lock thing okay. that replaces the bump stop. Okay. So when it settles down on the suspension, it comes down onto those. It basically increases the overall spring rate and helps keep the back end up closer to where it should be. Okay. Uh, I put a Hellwig anti-roll bar on it, which helps the handling, whether it's towing loaded or when you're running around empty. Okay. And I run Bilstein shocks on it. This, I put three sets of Bilsteins on it since it was new. I see, so this is not a Pro 4X, it's not an off-road version per se, but it's a four-wheel drive. Yes, yeah. yes, four-wheel drive. So tell me about the axle. You said you had an issue with the rear axle? Yeah. I started getting ring and pinion howl out of it at about 100,000 miles and I thought, well, it's, it's not going to last forever. And by 135,000, it was getting to where it was howling pretty loud and I was starting to getting a grumble noise out of it like I was getting bearings okay. failing in okay. it. So I went ahead and replaced the entire axle housing as an assembly. Okay. You get the whole assembly, the outer housing, axles, all the internals, everything comes on a crate complete with oil in it. So it's just swap out the whole rear end. Interesting. So you couldn't replace like special parts, uh, you, it's a separate parts, it had to be a, a whole assembly. Right. It's a, it's a Dana, it's a Dana M226 rear end, okay. but they don't use off the shelf Dana parts for it. Nissan has it built specifically to them, so you okay. can't buy parts for it. They just sell it as an assembly, which actually is not a bad idea. That way you're starting with an entirely new piece, yeah. and the labor is minimal to change it versus tearing one apart and rebuilding it. I see you have kind of a few toolboxes back here. and it's, it's... Toolboxes and I don't think anybody else does as good as Nissan in their tie-down system. These things, you can move these tie-down points wherever you need them, and interestingly enough, these little fittings that go in here are the same fittings that fit Super Strut, okay. which you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. So you can put as many tie-off places as you want. As you can see, I've added a dozen or so that you can move around. And So why did you originally choose the Frontier? I mean, you had the choice of a couple of other trucks, Tacoma, for example. Tacoma and Frontier were really the final two in the running because those were the only two I could get a manual transmission in. Okay. And I just liked the way the Frontier drove a little better and I thought it was maybe a little sturdier under the back for towing. But they were very, very similar. Actually, I thought the Tacoma looked better. Uh -huh. I think the Tacoma has better styling, but I was more concerned with function than I was with styling. And you got a crew cab, so you got four full doors. Uh, 
Tell me about this. There's, you have a cool piece of equipment here. You have a towing mirror. You don't usually see a towing mirror on the frontier, but you have it. Right. And for a long time, you could not get them. Uh -huh. Nobody made aftermarket towing mirrors. Yeah. And um, there's a company called 1AAuto.com, and they came up with these on their website. The outer part of it is actually a clone of the Titan towing mirror but the inner part is unique to the Frontier. 230 bucks shipped to your door. It's cool. Is they, it also power adjustable? Uh, they're not power adjustable. They yeah. are, well, the mirrors are power adjustable, but yeah. as far as it does not, it folds manually uh -huh. and it pulls in and out manually. I see. But, um, but it doesn't, the mirror you it doesn't can have control. power. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can control the mirror. And you got the spotter mirror, I mean, then. So you, you got to have reach to you, see it. Yeah, because the standard mirrors, of course, are in very close to the door and you could not see around a trailer with mm -hmm. them. And once you've towed with towing mirrors, you'll never want to go back to a standard mirror. How has the interior held up, uh, in your opinion? It's actually very good, but I kind of cheated on that. When I first bought it, I uh, put a set of Cabela's waterproof seat covers on yeah. the seats. Yeah to try to keep them because I'm always getting in there dirty at the horse barn and what uh -huh. have you. And I actually wore out that set of seat covers. I actually had worn a hole through the driver's okay. seat cover. Okay. So I figured that saved the factory seat. I pulled those covers off and found this inexpensive set of seat covers at Costco Wholesale for 25 bucks and put those on to try to keep saving it. Very cool. I see, I see the floor mat is a little bit worn, but hey, after 175,000 miles, what do you expect, right? So I see you have kind of a nav system, you have a scan gauge, um, you have a brake controller. So I mean, you're properly equipped, but you, why, why did you put the scan gauge in there? Mostly because the um, factory temperature gauge on these, even though it reads with a needle, yeah. people think that that is actually showing the actual temperature, it's not. But it's like off and on, almost? It, it is, it's okay. kind of an idiot gauge. Okay. Once the water temperature hits 155 degrees, that gauge goes to the middle position uh. and it stays there and it will not move above that position until it goes into overheat mode, which is like 230 degrees. Uh -huh. The scan gauge too reports data real-time data okay. and it shows the actual number of degrees so when I'm towing I kind of want to know if I'm running how hot you're getting right okay. how hot I'm getting okay and it doesn't it does not overheat it'll run it normally runs about 193 to 198 in normal driving and when I'm towing it's between 195 and about 202 so back in 06 uh, what was the buying experience like and how much was this truck well, buying experience was interesting because I had a hard time finding one with a manual transmission. Okay. I was told that 95% of their production is automatic. Okay. So I couldn't find a six-speed version locally. Even back then? Even back then. Okay. So I just started searching on Nissan's website and increasing my search radius. I wound up buying it from a dealer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I just flew up there and bought it and drove it back. Interesting. Now, George, what about rust? Any rust issues? Had no rust issues at all with it. And we get plenty of salt in the winter time in okay. Kansas City. They use salt on the winter streets, so. And you're telling me you recently kind of sprayed the frame in other areas? I started using a product called Fluid Film. Spray okay. the everything, frame, body panels, everything underneath gets a coating of Fluid Film every fall. September, October, I spray it on. And that's the black, black, it looks yeah, almost spray, like paint, right? Right, it, well, it goes on, it kind of looks like honey when you put it on, okay. and then a, after a while, of course, it attracts a lot of dirt, so it kind of turns black. Okay, looking, I see. Blood film works. Nice. So you drove here how many miles? 630 miles. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. But what about fuel mileage? What are you getting? Uh, normally it gets 17 to 19 in normal daily mixed kind of use. Okay. On the highway it gets 17 to 20 or so. I got about 18 yesterday pushing a headwind running 75. Okay. 
and uh, towing it gets about 8 to 11 with 10 being a pretty good overall average. Yeah, but if you're in the full-size truck towing maybe six or 7,000 pounds, you may see the similar numbers there. I agree, yeah. I agree. That was really neat to actually get the real story behind this 2006 Frontier. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and real world long-term truck reviews.